Working with Memory, a cross-training exercise. Part one, choose one of the following topics and write about it. Don't worry if the writing isn't in sentences. No one will see the writing you do but you, unless you choose to share it. Jot a list if it's easier. Sketch if it's appropriate. Use a format that works for you. Option one, write about the first cloth in your memory. How old were you? Where did it come from or where was it? Who did it belong to? Who made it? Why do you remember it? Why was it significant? Add anything else you may think of while writing. Option two, write about a garment you remember from your childhood. Your earliest memory of a piece of clothing, a favorite piece of clothing. Writing about childhood memories is a good way to shake up your mental and emotional equilibrium. Loosening images and ideas can transform them into content for artwork. A willingness to remember the past through writing is a rich resource. Comics look at the foibles of their childhood, put an ironic or humorous spin on past events, and make us laugh. You, the artist, can write about memories from past events with imagery in mind. Keep a running list of images that pop into your head as you write about your life. You won't know how to use images immediately, but eventually, what you write could evolve into subjects for work or series of works or design elements. Don't limit your list to objects. A running list of smells, sounds, and tastes is also a very rich resource. This strategy makes you a hunter-gatherer of past ideas, images, sights, sounds, and tastes. The richer your sensual and psychological wellspring, the deeper your work can go. Part two, drawing and sketching places you have lived or places you have visited and places you love are good ways to tap forgotten ideas and images. Allowing the subconscious to guide you while you draw, sketch, paint, or stitch encourages information to float to the conscious surface. Paying attention allows you to capture mental meanderings for future use as figurative and symbolic reference material. For example, draw a picture of a favorite room where you grew up. If you grew up in more than one place, pick a room with fond memories and happy associations. Show everything you can remember, either in a drawing or a floor plan. After drawing, write about that room, why it was so pleasant and anything else that comes to mind. These strength training exercises focus attention on detail and cultivate imagination. Artists respond. Here are a few examples of this writing exercise from Judy Cook. We lived in a little town with a big Independence Day celebration complete with carnival, rodeo, parade, and fireworks. It was my favorite holiday. One of my first memories is of riding my paper mache horse, also known as a decorated tricycle, in the 4th of July parade. Decked out in my spiffy cowgirl outfit, I was Annie Oakley on my horse, Target, prancing down the street, waving at crowds of cheering admirers. Complete with a vest, fringe skirt, hat, and trusty six shooters in my holsters, I loved my cowgirl outfit. I think it was black. The only thing I didn't have was a pair of red cowgirl boots, and I'm pining for them still. Judy also wrote, I was born in front of the wood cook stove on the first day of fishing season. The chimney was old like the rest of the house. Whenever mom got the stove hot enough to bake something, the chimney caught on fire. Family legend is that I quickly departed the house and watched the fire from across the street on the pitcher's mound in the Little League Park. My brother would be sent to fetch me whenever it was over. I had strong survival skills even then. We were all relieved when the wood stove was replaced by an electric range. I don't know how big that table in the kitchen was, but in my memory, it was huge. We spent a lot of time baking cakes and cookies and pies. I learned to cook and sew at that table. From Allie George. First cloth memory, a piece of fabric to complete a home economics project, a skirt. It was red and yellow patterned, tightly printed and somewhere between a heavy twill and corduroy. I made the skirt so short it was mistaken for a belt. Unwearable. 
I'd never sewn anything before, although Mum sewed many of our early clothes. I remember my sister and I feeling so special in matching pink hot pants. Ooh, were we naive? And not knowing we were laughed at and ridiculed because we matched. I never wore that skirt, it was too short. Horrid. Funny now, I can stitch thousands of small pieces of cloth together, but I have never stitched clothing. I hadn't thought about the negative experiences of sewing before now. I was 12 or 13 when I made that skirt, and the legacy is powerful. Part of the overall unpleasantness of high school, I guess. Not fitting in, an absence of social and other skills, sadness. It's a sadness I'm hugging and holding close. I'm letting it play out, perhaps for the first time. It surprises me how much I am physically experiencing that memory. From Claren Ferrano. I realize remembering clothes that I have always been most concerned about color and texture, even as a young child. I remember painting flowers in kindergarten, red and purple and blue, my favorite color combination. Now I'm remembering the romance of the painting smock. After my mother died, when I had begun art quilting, I made a couple of quilts out of clothes she, I, and my daughter had worn. The piece fashionista that I made is an example. From Gay Chemist. I grew up in the hopeful prim days of brown and orange plaid upholstery, swanky kitchen appliance colors, names like avocado and harvest gold, meant, I suppose, to convey a comforting, no one will starve in this house of plenty message. The linoleum looked like brick, what does this have to do with my first memory of cloth? Everything. From the first baby blanket to the quilts and rugs of scrounged means, every single item my grandmother made possessed a dodgy alchemy that corralled the screaming disharmony of her color relationships and pattern clash riots into something great and like a bad boyfriend, impossible to quit. Every gift of hers seemed like a bit of naughtiness snuck into our house and I was the one who got to let it loose. When I was about seven years old, my grandmother made me a small hooked rug using old wool garments she had cut into strips. I believe it was a Christmas gift that year, and I was crazy over it. So was my mother, but for different reasons. I thought, I have a magic carpet. My mother thought, a very serious injustice has occurred because my child has been given an ugly rug made of old clothes. This ugly rug has been a constant companion through numerous moves, a steadfast ride of color in the parade of crappy and not so crappy apartments I've inhabited over the years, and is an object that still makes me crazy happy every time I feel its thrifty nubbiness beneath my feet. from Louise Bateman. My mother made this dress for one of my piano recitals without using a Simplicity or McCall's commercial pattern. I was in awe and I thought I had the most beautiful dress at the recital. The pattern pieces were cut from brown paper grocery bags that had been opened so they lied flat. I was so taken that you could purchase a yard or two of fabric and turn it into a beautiful dress. Conclusion. How will you use the memories that bubble up through writing as an inspiration for your artwork? That's something to think about, and it's a topic we will continue to pursue. <laughs>